All right, Sky Squad, we are back in the building and we are talking Married to Medicine Season 9, Episode 8, The O Shot. Or as I like to call it, an infomercial for one of Dr. Jackie's services. Okay, that's what this episode felt like to me. I feel like personally sometimes, and I love Dr. Jackie, um, because I feel like she just has, you know, good intentions, a warm spirit, and, you know, overall, I definitely feel like the network loves her, but sometimes I just feel like, wow, this show is really a Dr. Jackie commercial sometimes. That's what it feels like to me, especially this episode, but I digress. <sighs> Um, let's talk about the rating for this episode. Now, on a scale of one to 10, I'm personally going to give this episode, I'm gonna give this episode like a solid, like eight. I mean, we got a couple of nuggets. Um, I've come to realize that Simone is the happy pot stirrer on this show. And what I mean by that is... <clears throat> Simone very happily, very cheerfully gets the mess started and is usually able to walk away from the mess unscathed and just a pure delight to watch because it's not even, it doesn't even feel like it's ever done in a malicious way. You know, when like I'm watching Beverly Hills and I'm watching somebody stir the pot, I feel like they are stirring the pot and they got a wicked uh, uh, a wicked witch laugh cackling in the background. But with Dr. Simone's cackle, it feels more carefree and fun for some reason. <laughs> I can't really explain it why. We'll talk about Dr. Uh, Simone creating some mess in just a bit. But first things first, we got to talk about Anila, okay? She's back from Vegas and she's popping more bottles because she didn't have enough there. She tells... Kieran about Toya disrespecting Jean, Eugene's clonker and about how Toya would want to swap husbands with Anila because um, she feels like Kieran's clonker be clonking, okay? And so by clonker, you guys may already understand that I'm mo I am speaking about the clonker. Okay, and that's all I'll say. Okay, if you for those for those for the kids in the room, if you don't know. Now you know, okay? Anyway, they talk about, you know, Anila's parents coming and he wants to set down some rules for them to abide by, okay? Like, you know, cleaning up after themselves and washing their hands when they prepare the food, okay? Honestly, Anila just wants a nanny. But back to this washing your hands when you prepare the food, please do so, okay? Now, I don't know, in, in my opinion or from my perception, they tried to make this seem like a cultural thing. And because I am not hip to the cultural thing, I will not comment on it further, lest I be considered insensitive. However, around these parts, before you put your hands on the food, I'm going to need you to wash your hands. Okay, period. Meanwhile, speaking of cooking and washing your hands, Toya is cooking at the house, okay? Um, she wants him to come, she wants Eugene to come on inside because the man can't ever have a minute of peace. He's trying to watch the game outside, but one of the one of the young boys has been accused of stealing something from a friend's house. A new kid on the block came to one of the friend's parties and accused, you know, one of Toya's sons of stealing something. Now they kind of wonder about the ramifications of falsely accusing a black kid of stealing something, which kind of led me to wonder if maybe the kids that they were hanging out with may not have been black. And so I don't know. It just kind of made me wonder, like, I guess, you know, nowadays we really have to be careful about, you know, um, teaching our young boys and our young girls specifically in for people of color and African Americans in general, um, that we have to be extra careful about how we maneuver through life. 
And it is a sad state of affairs that this is something that we have to do, especially with the innocence of a child, because the ramifications for the accusations that are being made are much more serious for someone, uh, for a person of color, because it's dangerous out there, especially if someone is falsely accused, because that could be a life or death situation in the wrong circumstance. You know what I'm saying? And so I did appreciate having this conversation, but where it went to next, I don't necessarily know that I agree with because Toya, you know, they talk about Toya coming back stressed and apparently she, she was stressed because of not only this incident, but also the fact that she felt like while she was away, that Eugene, who was working some 10, 12, 14 hours a day, didn't spend enough time together with the kids, okay, while she was in Vegas. And so he tells her in the confessional, he's like, don't do that, don't do that. And she says, well, I'll just go into how much time you spend with me. Ma'am, the man is working his fingers to the grind to support you and the houses that you want with all of these elevators. Now, I understand that you get a paycheck from this show, so you contribute to the house too. And, and I'm sure also too, you also contribute to the building of the household, which is equally as important. But this man is really out here working to, again, his fingers to the, to the bone. And you are complaining about the lack of attention that you are getting from this man. Girl, why don't you go and get a job? I never thought I would say that because I don't even think, I think that being a homemaker is a job. But what I want to, the reason I say for her to get a job outside of this show is, which filming a show is a job in of itself. But I say that to say, I, I feel like she needs to understand why this man may feel the way he feel when he get home. And I feel like the only way Toya is going to really get it is if she too has to be put into a situation where she is working 12 hour days away from the home doing something that she may not even really want to do anymore because the man seems a bit unhappy in the space that he's in, right? I could be being presumptuous, and I readily admit that. But at the end of the day, I feel like cut this man some slack, please, okay? Because you sound very vapid when you're speaking to him, okay? Very. That's just how it comes across on the screen. Now, again, I understand Toya probably has her own businesses and things that she is accomplishing, but I'm telling you what I am being presented on the screen, period, okay? That's what I'm being presented. That's what I'm reacting to, all right? Meanwhile, Dr. Heavenly goes to vi visit Dr. Jackie and, you know, basically, you know, Dr. Jackie welcomes her to menopause. We also learn that Dr. Heavenly's mom is in the hospital and they're thinking of putting her into hospice. So she's really going through a tough time right now. Um, over at Anila's, they prepare, the parents arrive, and they present the rules. The parents don't take it well. To be quite honest with you, while personally on this show, I, re I would replace Anila with Mariah. And that's just, let me just state it like that. This is no offense to you, Anila. I think that you are probably a very sweet young lady, a nice little, a nice blogger who is making your way in this world. But I just feel like I'm usually not that interested for some reason in the story because I don't necessarily understand how she really fits into this social circle um, other than the fact that her husband is a is a doctor of some sort. Um, I just feel like Mariah gives better television. And... Anila just doesn't do that for me. And it's no shade to her. It's just that the dynamics of this show were built upon the dynamics of the relationships that 
all of the ladies had with each other as well as with Mariah included. So whenever I'm watching the show, though I love it and I think it's one of the best shows on Bravo, I am missing that Mariah element to the show because her beefs with some of these cast members are legendary. And we still quote some of those things to this day. And I'm just being honest. Meanwhile, over at Dr. Simone's house, she's having Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Damon over along with Dr. Scott and Dr. Contessa. Now, this is to me where I feel like Simone happily curate, curated a mess that was bound to be a powder keg and explode, okay? Because knowing what we all know, and I feel like even though the two of those ladies had their resolve, I mean, I just felt like it was still only a matter of time before something came up. And of course, the, Dr. Simone wants to get advice for her book, you know, her and Cecil's book. And they admit that they're having troubles, you know, you know, writing and getting to the meat of, you know, the book and stuff like that. And essentially, Dr. Damon, for whatever reason, brings up this notion of women, you know, particularly the women in this particular friend group, um, saying things that cut and go below the belt and the men not doing the same thing. And then it becomes a situation where it's really about Dr. Contessa and Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Damon really feeling like Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Contessa should be beyond their issues. Now, for me, I felt like I did think that Dr. Damon had good intentions, but I'm like, Dr. Heavenly, did you not tell him that y'all hugged it out? I mean, because otherwise there was really no need to go backwards, okay? I understood where he was coming from, but it came about three episodes too late, okay? And I just got to be for real. I think he had the best of intentions, but all it really did was bring back up old wounds that had not healed. Well, wounds that had really not healed yet, okay? Wounds that require surgery that they had basically put a Band-Aid on. And I felt like the wounds could have been healing, but there were still little slick things that came out of Dr. Contessa's mouth and Dr. Heavenly's mouth throughout the dinner that let me know that things were not really back to the normal. OK, um, at a certain point, Dr. Contessa is annoyed because she feels like Dr. Damon is, you know, telling her that this is B.S., and she's like, no, this isn't B.S. This is real. And he's like, no, it's B.S. It's not that serious. And to her is serious. And she, for some reason, equates this to him to him mansplaining to her who she feels like don't come at me because we are doctors. We are both on the same level and you just can't come in here and talk to me any kind of way, which I don't feel like he was doing per se. But I also feel like, again, it was wrong time, wrong place. We didn't need this conversation to happen right here, right now. Dr. Heavenly's stance on this is that, you know, she feels like Dr. Contessa is out of place because she feels like Dr. Contessa is disrespecting Dr. Damon. Dr. Damon feels like Dr. Contessa, Dr. Heavenly is not listening to him and is going off in this moment. And he's trying to be serious. And all he wants is some respect. And he feels like Dr. Heavenly is disrespecting him. So let's put it all together. Dr. Heavenly feels like Dr. Dr. Contessa feels like Dr. Damon is disrespecting her. Dr. Uh, uh, Heavenly feels like Dr. Contessa is disrespecting Dr. Damon. Dr. Damon feels like Dr. Heavenly is disrespecting him. And Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Contessa get to cursing each other out at the table. OK, it's all kinds of shut the F up. F you, this, that, and the third, and it's clear that they are not over it. The next thing you know, you see Dr. Damon dapping up Cecil like, deuces, dog, I'm out of here, okay? And he chastises the mess out of Dr. Heavenly when he gets to the car, because he's like, when I ask you to do something, I'm going to need you to do it. Now, I don't know how I felt about that interaction, because I feel like I am not in control of, you know, my spouse. I don't ever feel like anyone is in control of what your partner says or does. And you can ask your partner, hey, listen, um, you ain't really making this no better, okay? But I can't say, well, I told you to do something and you ain't do it. Didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. 
because the conversation to me should have been, listen, I was trying to smooth things over. I feel as though you were making the situation worse. And I wish that you would have allowed me to make my point because I was really hoping that you guys could get back on the same page. But it really, to me, I wasn't with the all of the you not doing what I said to do. So I'm mad about it. Honestly, because Dr. Damon, at the end of the day, this show is literally centered on the ups and downs of these ladies' friendships. And honestly, the husbands need to stay out of it. And I love that Dr. Cecil told, not Dr. Cecil, but Cecil told Dr. Damon, give her some grace. You know, they are both going through a situation where the wounds are still fresh and they were really good friends. And this is not an issue that you want to dive yourself into the middle of. And I also felt like, you know, Dr. Damon telling her, you know, and I know that he's going to apologize to her next week. I just didn't like it in the moment. And I'm just being 100 percent for real about it, because I also didn't like how he was like, you know, don't talk to me right now or something like that while they were on the way home in the car. Because I felt like she was trying to protect him. And she was also probably equally as sensitive because she is also dealing with stuff with her mom. So I can't even imagine having to film a show, go to work, show up to events, and you got this issue with your mom going on at the same time. It just, to me, it it, it just, I again, I felt like Dr. Damon had the best of intentions, but he made a couple of wrong steps, in my opinion, in terms of his desire to try to make a, some type of resolve with this situation. Inside, Dr. Contessa is still upset because she feels like Dr. Uh, Damon was trying to, I don't know, I guess mansplain to her. But at the end of the day, I didn't really feel like that. I felt like he was just trying to say, listen, the issues you guys are going through, you know, I want you, I wish, I wish that you guys could work them out because I saw that you guys had a genuine friendship and I just, that's just how I felt about it. But anyway, um, it's the day of the O party, i.e. Dr. Jackie's latest infomercial. We learned that Dr. Heavenly is not coming. Um, it's just she had to sign some do not resuscitate papers for her mom. So she was obviously in an emotional state. Audra arrives. For some reason, Anila brings her mother. I don't know why she brought her mom because mom is kind of a buzzkill in terms of what this shot is all about, especially for helping women achieve better um, climactical experiences. Like, why bring moms if she's not going to try to get one herself? And if you know mom's got all these specific rules and whatnot, why are you bringing her? And at the age of 40-something, I don't know, I guess that's how old you are based on what Toya's assessment was. I mean, why do you have to ask permission about what to do with your cooter? I mean, at the end of the day, it is your cooter to coot how you want to and what your mama got to do with it. I mean, is she going to regulate when you and when you when you and your husband clonk and coot and coot? I mean, I'm what, what's up? What's up with that? You're too grown for this. This is one of those situations where I feel like, why are we doing this? I mean, I would have much rather seen Mariah and Miss Lucy there because I felt like that would have been entertaining to me. OK, when we want to talk about mother daughter duos, this just ain't the one for me. Not for me. OK, um, and I'm, and that's just the way it is. Um, for some reason, Carrie is there. But, you know, I'll just be feeling like Carrie is here for the free trips, for the alcohol and to watch some drama go down and to get herself an O shot. Because otherwise, I don't understand what Carrie's doing here. We don't see her having no one on one conversations with nobody. We only see her in group events. It almost feels like, girl, why are you here? I would have rather y'all brought Lisa Nicole back because at least it would have been some drama going on. Carrie is a nice lady, I am quite sure. But at the end of the day, when I'm looking for like interactions and snappy comebacks and stuff like that, and just somebody who's in it and active within the group, Carrie just don't feel like she's active within the group. So I'm like, why, why is she here, Ike? I mean, no shade to her. No shade to her. Anyway, in order to get this shot, 
Dr. Jackie is going to basically take some blood, run it through some machine, um, uh, and then take a needle and put it back up into your cooter. And so she has to go, and all the ladies got to go back into the back, open their legs, uh, get a shot in between their cooter. Um, and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, Dr. Jackie got to see all of these cooters. Now, I guess because she is an OBGYN, she's used to seeing the cooters, but and maybe she's used to seeing a couple of these cooters because, I mean, clearly some of these ladies go to her and everybody in Atlanta go to Dr. Jackie. So probably Dr. Jackie hadn't seen all the, all the cooters in Atlanta, but... But what I'm saying to you is, it's just like, is, is it is it weird that your friend is seeing your cooter? I don't really know. Somebody let me know in the chatterization because I don't, I mean, listen, the, my doctors be relative strangers, okay? Because I'd rather you be a stranger because now I got to be worried about, I don't know what it is. Just, I'm thinking about just like, oh, she didn't see the cooter. Okay, she done been all up in the cooter as well. So, but in, anyway, I, I guess I'm just thinking about it too hard because, you know, She's an OBGYN, so she's professional, and it's her infomercial. So at the end of the day, what am I talking about? So anyway, um, Toya asked Anila, did, girl, did you hear about Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Contessa over at Simone's house? And, you know, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Contessa walks up and says, well, it went left because of Dr. Heavenly. And Quad comes in. It's because Dr. Heavenly's mom is sick. And she's going through and through and through. I mean, she's correct about this. And she did the right thing in, in, in defending her friend. But can I talk about Quad for one second? Quad, I need to see a little bit more of what's going on with you other than all I see. And I do not want, I don't want to be, listen, I understand there have been, I mean, people have just been talking about this all season long. But I feel like I only see Quad in the kitchen with her nephew and her mama. And that's it. Everything they do is right up in the kitchen. Why is there no other room in the house that we can watch? It does quad is what else does quad have going on? I need to see more of what quad is doing outside of the kitchen and outside of the car with her nephew. Okay, I get that she is a Muncie now, but I mean, can you give me something? A parent teacher conference. I mean, give me something in the way of let what happened when he got home from school, help him with his math homework or something like that. I, I know we didn't see them tie shoes and things like that. But give me some real meat to this story. Give me conversations with the mama. Give me how y'all feel about things that are actually happening in your personal lives. Because these uh, countertop kitchen scenes, they are just not giving me the quad that I absolutely, positively, 100% need. Because quad is an entertaining person. And I feel like we are only getting micro doses of her throughout these episodes. And I really don't understand why. But meanwhile, they pray for Dr. Heavenly. And so... Um, the last person to think about getting their O shot is Anila. Moms won't let Anila go get the O shot for whatever reason. And I'm thinking to myself, again, girl, why did you bring her if all she was going to do was keep you on a leash at the age of 40 something? Leave her at home to, to cook and clean and do and take care of them kids, which is what you brought her here for. Anyway, um, she has to whisper in Dr. Jackie's ear, girl, I'll be back to get my O shot later. Ooh, yeah, save me some O. Um, anyway, that's the end of the episode. Um, let me know what y'all think. If y'all agree with anything that I said today, or even if you don't agree with it, let me know in the chatterization down below. This is a community for us to share our opinions, thoughts, ideas, and whatnot. But today, this is just how I was feeling. So that's how, that's what I gave y'all. And, uh, at this moment, because I feel like I'm feeling, um, froggy, let's go ahead and jump. Okay. And what I mean by jump is we're going to dance our way out.